Pat Mayo Experience 2020 Wyndham Championship, the final event before the FedEx Cup playoffs. Who's not jazzed up for some playoff golf? No one is the answer to that question. But hey, the tournaments are fun. Either way, smash the like button to the video in the comment section. Give me your winner. Also, subscribe to the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast, even if you just watch the videos. Help out the show by subscribing to the audio podcast podcast under Pat Mayo Experience, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Podcast, Spotify Podcast, Google Podcast. It's all there wherever you get your podcast. And if you want to really help out, rate the show five stars and leave a nice review. Not a bad review. Nice review. But just the five star rating works just as well. So just please go do that. Also become a member at fantasynational.com today. Fantasynational.com slash mayo gets you 20% off. A lot of people had a lot of success using Fantasy National at the PGA Championship, myself included. So hey, just use the weekly, become a member. It's actually not a bad time to get a monthly right now because it takes you to the end of golf. And then golf just like restarts right away too. So I'd highly recommend fantasynational.com slash mayo. Also, listeners league link in the description of this video and podcast. Over 3,500 people have already joined. I actually saved the link a day. You know, just you know, PGA Championship, focus on that. But it's more than half full already. So if you want your spot, you better go get it now. It appears in the same spot every week. So best tournament on DraftKings, you might as well play it. Jeff Feinberg is in studio with me. Nice week, pal. That's a good time. Uh, I was going to do that thing where we list off all the winners. It's impossible. It would take up legitimately 25 minutes of the show. So, And people would either just stay to hear their own name or skip through it. Yeah, so I, we're going to talk about the PGA Championship and then into the Wyndham. So always use the time codes for this if you don't give a shit about any of this stuff and want to skip right to the fun parts. But I got over 400 screenshots with Colin Morikawa winning tickets, uh, ranging from people with $500 on him at... 35 to 1 to people with $2 on them at 35 to 1. I don't care how much you bet on anything because it doesn't matter. It's great though. I, I love seeing, I really love seeing the one, two, three dollar because these are people that are testing the waters for the first time. They're getting in on some golf. I mean, the more people betting on golf, the better it is for us. So if you want to be in there with a five dollar bet or a two dollar bet, it's fun to wager two dollars on something and get 70 bucks back. It really is. Yeah, good times. Yeah. I it was overwhelming. He was a very popular pick. Popular As pick he should have been. across the community. I would say me and you were kind of alone. There weren't many people touting Dustin last week. No. Like there weren't probably um, for good reason after watching Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's its own thing and that's frustrating in and of itself, but hey, I can smile. I'm happy. Morikawa, it all just made sense. There was the bomber profile that took nine of the top ten spots. Then there was the there was the hybrid guys, and he is the optimal yeah. hybrid guy. And where it's penal if you're off the fairway, he hits it plenty long. He's certainly not short, and as it's long been documented, might be the best long iron player on the planet. Who would you say his comp is? I'd say he's better Stenson. Because I, I, was, I was making like... Yeah, roar. that's a very fair... There's never... He's, he's Stenson if Stenson could hit driver instead of three wood. I, you, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's quite remarkable. And I still don't know if he made the par on six, but <laughs> they told me he did, and the par on one. And to think if he doesn't hit those two putts... It's easy to say, okay, so he's at 11 and it's like a playoff. You have no, no idea where the day goes. No, like Bogeying one. The confidence that comes along with us. We'll get into the recap in a second. I did want to give a special shout out to some Fantasy National members. Not by name, but I saw a few. I saw a $110,000 winner on DraftKings. 75, yeah. 70, 50. I myself vacillated between up $13,000 and down $1,000 on Sunday and ended up $35. There it is. I was winning three single entries at one point, and then Brooks went, and just sunk all my lineups. And then Wolf ended up going, I had a good nice showdown day. But Wolf on we, Sunday was like, like in a, uh, when we added him on the... Uh, cut sweat. Yeah, it was a nice little sweat. He paid his yeah. each way, so Even, that was fine. Uh, See, we tried, because he was like live at some big numbers. I don't know. It was it was fun. What was even more a cow that night? I think he was right around like 
25, 30. Because he, he kept going up and then like bogey, bogey through the tough stretch and moving back down. Because we we didn't see him. We, remember we saw him on the broadcast? Like, Morikawa's four under here. And then they cut to him. It's like, bogey, bogey. It's like, oh, great. Yeah. Thanks, Morikawa. But yeah, over 400 winners out there. So congratulations to everyone. I'm glad you won. Just remember, especially if it was a nice double down, especially for me. I won a lot of money simply because Morikawa, Kisner top 20 was really nice. I accidentally double bet it. Good mistake to make. And UFC last week cody on twitter giving out 94 to 1 parlay winners insane he, he gave out a he gave out four part he gave out five parlays the 500 to 1 didn't hit but the other four hit all the way up the board so that is if fucking I, incredible yeah. so the problem is now that people are like oh my god so many winning picks on the pat mayo experience which was true last week doesn't happen every week like that you need you need to really ride with us <laughs> I, like i said we I don't know. The weeks seem to have stacked up on each other. It doesn't normally work like that, but we'll enjoy it while it happens. And you're a, you're an animal. Like I'm, I come back and I've got like the Menchies are un like, I can't even comprehend what's coming in. And you're like giving everyone props. I'm just here to say, I see you all, you all rule. I don't have that that strength i tried I to, well i all. knew i didn't want to do it on the show and list 400 yeah. names so i tried to respond to everyone on twitter instagram facebook the email that was hitting me up i, I love seeing it it's, it's yeah. fucking awesome and i love seeing my bank account afterwards too it's, it's very nice my wife seems to enjoy it too yeah i might probably not tell her about this <sighs> now she's spending the money already. i know i'm excited <laughs> to maybe do some online shopping today <laughs> well let's talk about the pga championship where do you want to start do we want to start with morikawa yeah that's we got not, to that's not the most fun part of this. Like, if you had to rate his drive on 16 amongst all-time great major shots, it's easy to say, like, because you get the hyperbole right away. Like, that was the greatest shot in major history. I don't know about that. Like, I think Tiger's chip on 16 is probably better. Yeah. The, <laughs> and the in-game variance. Just, just one off the yeah. top of my head. Of that shot. Larry Mai is chipping in. And if you took in the whole day from early to late and... The, you watch that whole play the whole day. You know what the the trajectory you need. If you've seen guys come through and we have the shot tracer, you see when they hit it and we get the shot tracer and what sort of angle it's on. That thing was like, from every shot I saw, you knew from the air this thing was going to be amazing. You know, It's like when you see a putt that's like 10 feet out and you're like, holy shit, it is center cut. And it doesn't move its line. It drops right, right in. The moment that tracer went up, you got tingles You're based saying. on the other it, it was lines all- we've seen go into that hole and what the successful shots looked like. It was better than the, the Streelman and Palmer. the Palmer shot. We saw them all. Well, two things. One, it was the exact opposite of the Finau shot where he sounded oh. like, that's in the trees. Yes. <laughs> uh, and two, if you followed Spieth and Palmer around and watched them in the morning, they set a really good template for what to expect from the rest of the day, because they both played really well. You'd be like, oh, if guys are going to win, they need to do this. Yeah. And Morikawa did what Palmer did. But those two par saves are gigantic. And they, there are just so many different things that can go wrong can happen that lead to Morikawa just kind of coasting away with it. Like Casey's awful chip, I think on 14 or 15, the first hole that he ended up bogeying, like that just took him out of it. He was done. But then he made that great bounce he, back. He did, but he couldn't afford to make that bogey. And he did. Fair. We saw a few guys make that bogey. Dustin bogeyed that hole too because he couldn't get it up. Guys went long the there a uh, couple times. I don't. But with Morikawa, the fact that we didn't see the huge par save on six is fucking ridiculous. And who was he playing with? Because we saw them hit a putt on six. He was playing champ. With champ. We saw the champ putt on six, but we didn't see the Morikawa putt on six. How about. I mean, if we really want to give full credit to who we can rest the Morikawa win on, I think we got to give some credit to Tim on this one. What did he do? He shut up? No, he cursed poor K. I thought Cameron Champ was going to win. Once he started making all the, those the putts. 50-footer? We just, we just it Because when he's won both of his other times, that's how he wins. Uh, I thought Day was going to win when he got the putt to get to 10. That kind of no, Day, swirled Day around. Day missed too many on the front nine. Day, yeah, but you get that feeling, uh-oh, when he's in that zone, I thought he was going to hit everything coming home. Thankfully, his putts coming home were for par. Yes. Thankfully. But... Tim tweeted out right after like the long par save. I was like, Chamber Champ needs to go away. I'm terrified. I was terrified of him and Scheffler, who looked amazing. I mean, 
Did he putt for bogey until I, he did? No. But he all week? But he, just, he was like Dustin on the and front. Last, he just couldn't make one. And if you had money or DraftKings him recently, it was literally, he's been doing this for a while. He just hit more putts this week. He was sticking everything in Memphis, couldn't get it to roll uh, at all for him. He's a guy that everyone was so high on coming into the restart because he was on like Instagram a lot winning like Muni events versus Zalatoris and Hovland like every <laughs> week. It felt like maybe just once, but a lot of, sc- lot of low scores. But no, Tim puts out after champ makes the putt. That is a championship save. Next hole. He's like out of bounds Which, off yeah. the team. Champ was making a lot. He was making and, and then he um, so Tim tweeted about Champ and how that was a championship save. That's what winners can do. I, Immediate double bogey. Can I? I mean, it's easy to like after the win find an angle that like you feel good about calling. Morikawa, it was the great like long irons, accurate off the tee, local knowledge. There were so many angles that made perfect sense that to people who like to do this, like I just have to have him on my card. Members like I might laugh at myself if Tiger's great. But how am I not picking Morikawa? Thank God I didn't take Canley there because that was where that pivot was. Is Cantley's number kept getting higher, flirting with a thirty, and yeah. you're like, "This is." Silly. I had Cantley as well. Well, I called what your card would be on, like as we were talking. Like that's a great little card. Um, my the only thing that I feel that I literally nailed in this, and it's easy to say after the fact. It was easy to say going into yesterday that no crowds would probably help the younger guys in a way that maybe it would feel less like pressure. Although the life changing, what's going through your head, they all know the money and what changes by winning crowd or no crowd. You just don't hear a roar when Morikawa hits that chip. You don't like hear it. You wouldn't hear a tiger roar from the other side. No, oh shit, something happened. I, I'm actually shocked that Morikawa didn't hear me yell, fuck yeah, yeah. when it went in. Well, I was... You- Jazz. You thought maybe the Cal Golden Bear golf team was like outside the fence because the, the the yells were always louder for him. But here is my point, and I said it from the beginning of the week. The fact that there was no crowd there all week, I'm telling you, might be the reason he won this tournament, in my opinion. We've seen even what happened to Rory McIlroy at Port uh, Port Rush last year. Remember the time before you can make your insults about like Tommy and he's not a closer, whatever. Remember we had an open as he was getting hype like down the street, like where he walked his dog his whole life and everyone was obsessed with it. If 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 Miss McGee, his third grade teacher, standing there on first tee like Thursday, Friday morning, getting up at seven a.m. to watch their kid golf and two hundred people he's known his whole life. I'm just telling you, it, it allowed him to play the home game without the home game. And I'm, I can't put into perspective how much I think that allowed him to get to Sunday in a position. Because we've seen guys be there before and they can't even get off the blocks. Your first major with uh, pressure and expectation and it's like down the street. I, that was a winning factor. I promise you I mean, and we she, saw the local knowledge play off kind yeah. of around the greens all week as we were excited about champ did kind of the same thing like champs from sacramento he's played yeah. the scores a bunch of times as well uh the california you know why this just didn't occur to me you know how we always talk about john rom plays really well in california john rom actually had a good week he came 13th <laughs> it's just he was he did his damage yeah, just, on the weekend like he just kind of came back but versus Brooks and versus Rory and versus JT. Rom got the number one spot in the world back, and no one even talked no about it. No one that. talks about it. No one knows. It's good for you, John. I was happy to see it. But Paul Casey plays really well in California. <laughs> and if lost you, at Pebble if you, to Phil last year. He was, he's lost in a playoff at Riviera. He's played well at Torrey Pines. Justin Rose is another one that typically plays really well in California. Didn't, I mean, that was, I wanted him to Jason go Jason Day as well. Jason yeah. Day is Juan another Juan Torrey, one. both of them. So that, I found that to be just, I wasn't even thinking about that coming Dustin into Dustin Johnson. Week. Yeah, well, play, we, well, we knew about Dustin. Plays, yeah. But at the same time, if you look at this leaderboard, yes, there's a lot of bombers. But the reason that we tend to back the players that we do is because of the consistent skills that they have. The off the tee, the irons. And that's not going to be every single week. But we always say that you know putting goes up and down. It's just if one of these guys has a good putting week, they're going to win by a bunch. And that's what happened with Morikawa. Yeah. Like it does, it was Dustin until his putter stopped working. Dustin's day 
Dustin was like playing the U.S. Open for some reason. Like people were going out there and trying to score. Yeah. Dustin was trying to grind pars. Until the one hole where he tried to be hyper aggressive with a seven iron on 10 and he short sided himself. That was the that was a thing. free birdie to the middle of the green Once he with did- a run at eagle. And, and he just felt that moment. You kind of felt like nothing else happened for him. He got that great opening hole and then he made the great birdie from the fringe on four. And there were a couple putts that you felt he had the pace and just got by. Yeah, he, he, he had the weight on every putt perfectly, but he was two inches to yeah. the right. Then he'd overcompensate and be two inches to the left. But I felt I had that big, oh, no, when he when we couldn't get 10. Because he wasn't, as you said, he wasn't just getting things. Where, like, he didn't have a good enough front nine. We were like, okay, water found its level. He didn't get 10. He got to 10, had a seven iron in his hand, and he needed 10. Did anyone have a more inconspicuous final round 67 being kind of in the mix all day than Justin Rose? Who they just did not show on TV until he lipped out a putt on 17? It seemed like, listen, you made mention of his fantastic irons and they kept him alive because his fairways on like Thursday were insane. And he, to me, was a magic beaner, but the iron play says differently. Uh, But off the tee at a place where it was supposed to, you were supposed to pay, he didn't a lot. His problem, it seemed like both Saturday and Sunday, Pat, he like got two straight bogeys or two early. But by the end of the day, he was back. But those, I he guess, was too far behind. He was kind of too far, far behind. But there's a bunch of like if Wolf had made those five foot yeah. birdie putts on like 12 and 13, yeah. it feels like this would have been a totally different story because then totally. all of a sudden, like, yes, Morikawa still wins at minus 13 versus minus 12 from Some, Wolf. But someone at 11 changes the whole or complexion. He would, have been at, he would have been at 12. Yeah. And these were very makeable, makeable like putts. easy putts, like the putts that you need to do to win. Obviously, he missed them, so he, he was, didn't win. He was stalking those, those pins. He gained four more strokes ball striking than the next closest person in the field, who was Paul Casey. Crazy. And you mentioned to me he was like the only guy in the top 20 who lost strokes putting. Uh, he lost two strokes putting for the week. Berger lost and Rom oh, lost. Yeah, they Berger. were both. But they, they, who were the biggest losers on Sunday? Because we can talk about Brooks. I'd say Fleetwood. Fleetwood, Brooks, Berg. I want to say yeah. Berger. Berger, yeah. Berger just missed a few Saturday putts. You could tell. I'm no like swing stroke expert, but it was, I know the broadcast pointed it out but something looked awkward with his stroke on Saturday and it clearly never found itself that being said I think he'll set up well for winged foot yeah I think that he's I think he'll set up well I I think you're gonna see a lot of crossover between this and the U.S. Open you'll see some of the shorter hitters play because the U.S. Open does sometimes lend itself to shorter hitters because they'll just so much so many fairway like the Todd's of the world yeah Poor Todd, man. He was at minus five after one round. Tim went all in. I think he finished at minus five. People were joking, or not joking, because maybe there's something to the actual point that Morikawa was the best iron player they've seen since Tiger Woods. And I'm like, check that. The best iron player I've seen since Brendan Todd. Wait, <laughs> Bre- Brendan Todd on Golf Channel on Thursday yeah. afternoon. Best irons in the biz. <laughs> He's become like the new Charlie Hoffman at me like, at every tournament. He just gets out to a hot start and then stays there the rest of the week and everyone else passes him. But like even this week, he gained like eight strokes, 7.1 strokes putting. Guy putts, man. He's actually had a course this week, which is more of a Brendan Todd type course, short Bermuda course. There's a couple of short Bermuda specialists. I do think that the going, because Wyndham is usually after the WGC and that's either at Firestone now in Memphis. It's a very short trip to Greensboro. But now that you're coming off like the letdown of a major in San Francisco, coming back across country to compete for the Wyndham Championship, do you feel like the the heart and soul of some of the top names may not be in this this week? Yeah, of I, course. I don't know. That, how, like, I, it's hard to quantify. That's that. always a concern out of a major. You feel it's just such a mental, in, like, just a grind. But we thought that about the Canadian Open when it used to be after the British Open, and then the top guys would come and win. Yeah, but they also didn't have to. Yeah, no, I... I don't know what to make of it because I would say the cr- no crowd takes a lot of the emotional highs and lows out of out of it. Like that roller coaster. Oh, my God. What a roller coaster that guy just had on a major weekend. Now it's the Wyndham, as you're pointing out to me. No crowd. I really do believe takes a lot of. Um, yeah, the, the highs and lows 
out of that, like, uh, in whatever I'm trying to say, I think you're catching yeah. on. So the Brooks comments on Saturday evening, basically dismissing everyone else on the leaderboard, even throwing shade at Dustin. I love it. I can't get, I just hooked me up to this Brooks. If Brooks wants to go full heel, I'm, I'm for it. Like, let's go be, a, be the bad guy. I love this. Yeah. I just don't believe any of it. Okay. Why? Because golf is hard and he does practice. That's not what he's talking about though. He's just like, yeah, I'm not sweating. No, it's all this. It's all that. This is a simple game. You guys like overcomplicate things. I got this. What? This whole Brooks narrative. The, I get it's all one big shtick, and I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I just want. To I make- think Bryson is real. I think Patrick Reed is real. I think Bryson is kind of like a, an attention-seeking behavior fake. I do Bro- not Brooks. Brooks. Yeah, he wants attention because he won four fucking majors, and no one cares about him. <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> And Bry- all Bryson had to do was gain 15 pounds and no one can stop talking Listen, about it. Listen, I get it. He's the man. He's the man. He's the man. He chews tobacco. He drinks Michelob Light. He shows up in big tournaments. He's the man. I am still of the belief he's not any better than any of the other guys we put there. No. He's, like he's, day for day, he, pound he's, for he's pound. He's one of the f- yeah. five to ten guys. Like they're the all the same. I don't think he's different. I don't think he wants it more than anybody. A big event. I think they all want it the same pretty much, except maybe Dustin. No, I think that I think that <laughs> if you just kind of assess it objectively and look at who has the best skill set to win these big events. Like because we're dealing with like long courses. PGA thick- Championships, US Opens are the same profile. US Opens just get set up a little more diabolical. Yeah. I would say that if I had to pick two guys who were like are the best suited, like Dustin would probably be third, but it'd be like Brooks and Rom. Yeah. They have the best skill and set. And you trust this. Brooks's mental more than Rom's skill. Yeah. Like I'm just saying it's until we clear, get there. Until yeah. we get there. I'm I'm certain we're going to get there. But baby, Bryson put on a show. Well, that was Bryson what, put on a freaking show. That's what I and wanted to get gonna to. He's going to take these other ones by the balls, man. I li- by the balls. It's like a ticking time bomb of his explosion of, of majors. So let me ask you, because we were sitting with Morikawa, Dustin, and Casey tickets. And at one point, there were seven people tied for the lead. Who were the guys that you were actually scared of that were going to come beat you? For me... It was Bryson, number one. Well, I had... Because I was like, he could birdie every hole. And the, the other one was Day. If Day starts getting hot with the putter, like, this is over. Day scared the shit out of me. But as I... I, I mean, you may, I had some future bets. But those bets I'm making... Like, we, we're catching fire. I'm winning a hot ticket, and I'm leaving a, a, a 50 chip on the floor as I'm cashing out, like, three grand. I don't, like, notice. <laughs> I'm sorry. The smarts will say, no, Feinberg, that's your money. I'm like, no, cashing out like three or twenty nine fifty is the same thing. And now there's just something I like, like a stock in the major. So I had like Bryson at 28 to one, but I know, you know, bet it big enough in that moment. Cause it's just like, oh, if I like it when it happens, I'll like get in on it more. Next thing he becomes flavor du jour and he's at this crazy number. So I had an out on, on Bryson that wouldn't anger me and enjoyed his hot start. And day, I, as I said earlier, they scared the shit out of me. Every putt coming home, I think he's going to make when he gets in that that zone. More so than anybody. But I'm not going to lie. I, I enjoyed Brooks's ejection. I enjoyed Brooks literally on Sunday. And this is part of a fear because I got lots of winning tickets. Who do you fear? You take one man out, Feinberg. You take one it man w- out it today. Brooks. It's Brooks. <laughs> All my bullets, Brooks, get him out of here. I'll deal with Day on the back nine if I have to. Just make sure we can get there. Because this guy runs train. That's that was the single, and that because there was not a moment where I was sweating Tony Finau. Not gonna lie to you, but it was nice to see. Hey, uh, hey listen, nice top five Tony player. finishes inside the top five. Not gonna lie, but at no point did it ever feel like he was going to win. The moment yeah, he, he hit that putt on fourteen, no, the, to mo- 11. the moment he got there, he put it into the trees, and then he. Shanks it left on the par three and almost chips in, hits the pin. He's lucky he hit that fucking pin. Do you know what? He would have been 50 feet away from the hole if not. Do you know what his crutch, his, well, there's a lot of crutches with Tony. 
But drivable par fours while in contention in the moment. This yeah, guy, e- easy holes. Yeah. It's just like Dustin. The one, easy holes in contention. They fucked them up. Which was the one, not the, the Memorial Workday one. Couldn't hit it at all. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, we got water, water, water. And then yesterday, right where the water would have been at Workday. Do you know who? On I- essentially a hole that felt similar to how it was set up at the Workday. Well, the funny thing the is. More cow one. Well, anyone and that putt that Morikawa hit at the workday shows that he could do anything to answer that Justin Tom. Like when you look back at it, it's all like so recent. You're like, holy shit! Like the emotional ability to hit the thirty footer. No wonder he hit a par putt. We didn't have to see on six. You, he could hit anything. Yeah, you, I you, I only knew he made the par because you tweeted something. Yeah, but well, I thought you were the app updated, and I was like, oh shit, this is like. The app no, but, could not have okay, been more we'll, like... We'll get there in a second. <laughs> but you said, I thought you were just joking because he hits crazy par putts. I thought you were just making a joke. Like, I can't wait to see him hit this putt when we get back. I didn't know you're actually referencing. No, holy shit. He hit that putt. We're not seeing it. The app's telling me for five minutes he's hit this putt. The app was good for like three players being in real time. <laughs> and then for other guys, we're like five holes behind. Justin Thomas was on Saturday, was on the third hole minus one while he was like five under on the eighth <laughs> on the app, the official app. It was bad. How bad is it going to be that like the Wyndham is going to be like leaps and bounds? Like we're back to like regular shot tracker. Like this is great. That's what we talked about on the cut sweat. The most embarrassing part about it is the ex- user experience on inferior events is better than what we get for the biggest stage. At least with like, sometimes when you try to go to like the alternate events, whether it be the Barracuda or Puerto you Rico accept, or OHL, accept. like it doesn't have the shot tracker, like, but it, it tells you what hole they're on even and, it up, it, and it updates their score after they finish the hole. Like that would have been good enough. Cause even like when you go to the, when you go to the site or go to the app, they don't have the pin placements on the map. So it looks like everyone's in the hole on their approach. It's like, oh, no, they're 75 feet away. It's like, what the fuck is this? It's horrible. It's a real, real bad look for the PGA Champ. Like, get this fucking figured out. Because the PGA Championship app is the worst one every single year. It is. It's, it's horrible. At least the U.S. Open app, like, keeps up to date with stuff. They try. And the Masters, as we know, they've invested. And as, we, as we've discussed, it's, like, different people own the, the tournaments. Yeah. You can tell. Uh, quickly to Brooks though, a couple of things as much as make the jokes. I, yeah, it was nice to see him not be involved for a minute on Sunday. He, he razor thinned, miss a birdie putt on one. And then by the third hole, he got a horrible spot or maybe it was the second and he was gone and never heard from again. Golf must be hard. <laughs> I've heard that. I hope He'll probably withdraw so he could play up for his slappies that he was injured. Yeah, I did. Don't use that term. Stands. Don't use that term. Hardos. Like people on the internet are fucked. <laughs> Which one? All, Not, all, none. All three of those. <laughs> like, take yourself out back and old yeller yourself. If you're using these terms. Like, can we, seriously. Can we call them nut huggers? They're just. Fans? Fans. Okay. Fan, doesn't fan work? Nah. The Brooks fan funny. club is, they're a different. Does Brooks kind of. even have a fan club? Yes. No, it doesn't seem like no. he does. Do you know what it seems like? It seems like everyone wants to say there's all these Brooks fans, and I, I, don't, I don't see any of them. Dead wrong. Who are they? They're everywhere. Are they? Yeah. They're literally give, give everywhere. Some names. Give me some names. What do you mean names? Like, who are these people? Go ask Empire Maker, who raked them. D- did he end up taking a bunch of action on that? A bunch. Okay. Crazy. But, He's got balls, but no. This but ho- at the same time, he was offering plus 150 Brooks over day. No, like, I'm not talking I, about. I probably, if I saw that, if I didn't see it after the fact, I probably would have been like, no, yeah, I'd bet that. People <laughs> think you're insane when you question him. And it's. No, sorry, that's not. Because questioning him is kind of insane. His track record shows he's the freaking man. Uh, you can't debate that. Uh, but no, he's got a legion. He's got legions. They put out his own shit now, finally. Got like Brinks trucks on shirts. Sweet. Good for him. No, it's a fun little gimmick. Did Bryson gimmick? Ga- did Bryson gain more fans this week? Hope so. Gim. It's it's a gimmick. Reed, I sense it's real. Bryson, I sense it's real. He lacks true self awareness. Brooks, 
is on the 6T like looking at what you're tweeting. I don't think that he is, man. I think that you want to think that Brooks is like like some frat dude that you know, and he's not. He's just the guy who fucking chills. No, what do you mean some frat dude that I know? I think some of the things he says is 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 beyond egregious. And I think they're fake. So that's my part that I don't enjoy about him is I think Why? He's, 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 he's drumming up drama. It's great. He even got Rory to respond. Oh, I like it. I'm here. But here's the thing. No one pays me enough to not be a fan. So these are my opinions and my feelings. And I'm a fan. And that's just where it comes from. Did anyone have a more luck sacky week than Norin? He held on for a bit. Luck sacking. Fleetwood felt like luck was luck sacking for a long, he like was. hitting a ton of insane putts. Uh, at least through the first couple days. Uh, I, you know, people can laugh at me. I think he sets up for Wingfoot, but it's a U.S. Open. He sets up for U.S. Open. Yeah, we, we have that future bet on him, although that could be higher. Probably I, I think it's higher. probably going to be higher by the time we actually get to the U.S. Open, although he could win Wyndham this week because he's actually in the field. Let me just, just check one more. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. i got to give Brooks respect for this. I think him and Paul Casey... Uh, really get along. He's probably Paul Casey's one of the few people Brooks probably respects because he's seen him without a shirt on. Well, Paul Casey, former power lifter. Yeah, like Brooks, <laughs> I think, has a deep respect there because Casey, to his credit, for all the jokes I like to make, and even on was like call it like show me Brooks. I want to see his sour puss face right now. Like sad sacking this golf course. Casey said after his round, I guess he was asked that Brooks was an absolute gentleman. I don't know where they have a friendship from. Apparently they've played a uh, few tournaments they've been drawn together, so they seem to get along. Casey would probably surprise people, probably makes Brooks' like, list of 30 guys just because of his upper body. Well, it, it, feels like Casey should, like, it feels like Casey should have five majors. A, a major and like big, a w, like bigger wins. Yeah, it's bigger just, wins. It's just I don't so want to say the majors, but like nice quality events that we glom, glom onto. I think he has... Nothing. What is it, like eight top tens now in majors? Like eight, six top fives? Yeah. Like he's just there. He just can't fucking fight. <laughs> Killing him. Yeah, he gained 0.9 of a stroke. That's usually good enough for him to win. And there was a day. Despite well, not yeah, losing. And five. one of the days he was, uh, might have been Saturday or Friday, he was making a great ton of par saves, which he not normally doesn't do. True. Biggest revelation of the weekend. I mean, it's not really a revelation because I think people should know Spieth it. and JT are friends? No, that oh. Phil's commentary. Get Phil and Faldo together and have them just bicker back and forth. Here's I the, am just plug me into that feed the entire yeah, day. One hundred percent. I, I did, when, before we get into Phil, I don't know if it's specific to Phil because I thought Spieth's insight to the course right when he finished his round and they interviewed him was really good. That on Saturday and Sunday, why not go grab one of the guys that's out early and finish and fucking put them in the booth? Do you know who does that? The European tour? The European tour. Of course. They're way ahead on this stuff. And it is, you are 100% right. A guy that people like, that can talk it through. He comments on every shot. It's such, it's so great. Even when you see Jack, like, talking, because he's hit every shot on 90% of these courses that we play. It it is so enjoyable. You're not wrong at all. We should get more of that. It gives you such different insight, like... Just him talking about the pin locations, like, oh, yeah, they're attackable if you hit it here and here and yeah. here. And then he can comment, like, because there's nothing worse than the on-site reporter being like, oh, well, he's dead. Oh. And then he hits it to two feet. It's like, okay, was he really dead here? Like, I feel like Spieth, Spieth would be able to tell you, like, is he actually dead? Because sometimes you see them like, oh, no, he short-sided himself. He can't get this within five feet. Like, that's impossible. So the best he can do is five feet. Yeah. It's probably going to be 25 feet. No, but you're right. No, he says, I can, you get, you get that right in the fringe. He could trickle that down there. It's not as hard as you think, Finchie. Like, I don't know. You're absolutely right. The thing with Phil in the actual booth, I don't know that there's Romo money involved in the golf side. Like, you get why they want to pay so much for football. Football is the... Oh, there's not. And Phil's so still making money being can, a player. Yeah. No, I don't know that Phil's rate, like, you could pull him because I don't think you can offer that money because I don't think that makes sense on the golf side. Here's what you do. You do the Mike Weir deal that TSN used to do for Canada, that at the Masters, Mike Weir would be a part of the oh. commentary team after he missed the cut. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so just make that deal with Phil. Like, Phil, if you miss the cut, you're in the booth for the next two days. He has has so much goddamn money, it doesn't. he probably doesn't want to do it. Yeah, he doesn't want to hang around the property. But he's, that, he's so good at it. So though. good. So good. He has played 
And he just pissed off Faldo so much. It was so great. <laughs> but it seems like they're pals. Yeah, of and course. like they're giving each other a hard time. People are like, they really don't like each other. It's like, I don't no. think so. That'd be like tuning into this show and saying like, oh, Pat and Tim don't like each other. All they do is bicker. <laughs> yeah, it's like best man in his wedding. Yeah. H- hates him. Hate his guts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You're not that mean to people you don't actually like. That's sort of in the a joke in a jokey. Yeah, way. like how mean I can be to my friends in my group chat. I'd never be that mean to, to like a random a person. random friend or someone who I do. Yeah, that's one hundred percent. But no, it would be a good platform too for like. Oh, you see a lot of like I remember Jalen Rose did this whenever like he was eliminated from the playoffs. Like he would go become a sideline reporter uh, during the playoffs for the NBA with like TNT or ESPN. There's been a bunch of guys that have done that. It'd be great for some of the younger players, like someone like Max Homa. I know he's in a lot of these tournaments, but if he just got shelved early, he was like T70 on Sunday, get him into the booth, like get some of these broadcasting reps. It would just be good to get some of these voices yeah. in. Then you can, it's good for your, and Homa bright, would do it. Of course he would. Yeah. And, uh, and he'd be good at it. 100%. And there are a few guys even out there and he could do, make fun of i don't know they can make a bit out of what he's already doing especially if like one of his like damon's his buddy damon's in the mix he can be like lipping damon the entire time like come on joel make this putt <laughs> it'd be fun is all i'm saying you just go and I, I we didn't get to see the espn plus broadcast because we're up in canada but by all accounts it was amazing for showing golf shots and it just really put into perspective how bad cbs is at a lot of this stuff that, again, show the fucking shots. Show the shots on Sunday. You're missing shots from the guy who won. And it's not like he wasn't in it. He was in the second yeah. to last group. Apparently, the um, the layup. What's the blog? The layup? So, I remember Tim called no laying up, like the layup oh. on Friday. Like, you think I have a memory for things Tim says. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they made reference to the Casey approach on 18... Into the green was not live. It was tape delayed. There was a. He's the one guy on the course that can, at that moment, literally maybe be part of this thing. He hits that putt. There's pressure on the tee being up one compared to two. That's common sense in golf. What that might change. Yeah, that was like the wolf thing, the yeah. Casey thing. It all affects Morikawa because you know he has the eagle putt. Because that the shot that he hit on 16 yesterday was no different than the shot that he hit at workday on that par four that was drivable except he hit it to 10 feet and missed the eagle putt yeah. and that's how he ended up in the play that's when we thought he was done because he didn't make the eagle this time he makes it let's say he misses that eagle putt because wolf's in the clubhouse at minus 12 all of a sudden it's tie game now the pressure is way up but they were doing tape delay on everyone because when finau short-sided himself on 17 and missed left it was like all right they it was like uh, they showed like two shots from someone. They're like, cut back to Tony Finau, who's now chipping. So obviously that wasn't live unless Tony Finau turned into Usain Bolt and sprinted up to his ball to hit it. So we weren't seeing the shots in real time, or at least half of them, which I don't have a problem with if it's going to kind of, that's sort of the motif that you're going with, but at least use it to show more shots. Yeah. Don't just, I don't know what they're doing. It's like, let's cut over here. Let's go to eight more commercials. I'm trying to find a tweet I thought I screen grabbed. Uh, do you have any thoughts on Spieth? Or it's all like overblown? He's got a few top 10 since the restart. Well, like well, he's I, I don't cuts. even know. I, you'd be surprised how little I read of anyone else or hear from anyone else that I just try to. I, no, I just mean like a lot was just. A lot was made of what? Just him, I guess, getting lapped by the an actual player like Justin Thomas. I don't know, just struggling. Is, is, is a this lot. like new to people? No, it is not. But sorry, the broadcast, the ESPN broadcast. I didn't watch the ESPN broadcast. The main feeds, not what we were getting. They were highly critical oh, of him. I, did. I only listened to oh. Phil when he came on, and then I turned it back on mute. Like, highly critical. They really debated, uh, you know, potential of, of firing Cam McCormick. Uh, you know, do you need to make a caddy change? Not that these guys aren't great and can't help you, but just like coaches in sports, if you've won championships together, things... Run its course. Yeah, Phil, he's making the Phil same bones off yeah, the bag. He's making the same. The same things are happening for three straight years. Spieth, when asked previously about it earlier in the year, has pretty much made it clear like he has some life in debt, indebtedment to Griller, M- M- no McCormick, um, which I think is a bit ridiculous at this point. Obviously, he feels he owes Cam, and and Cam has helped him since he was twelve years old. 
But Cam is like the face of Golf Channel shows and Hawks products now. It's not like that relationship hasn't been incredibly beneficial to him. I think you got to make the change off the course. I don't think Greller on the course is, is any part of the problem. I think it's, it's funny because we went through this entire thing like, oh, Spieth is like playing horrible. He is terrible now. I found he's actually been a lot better yeah. than he and has And the results been. aren't horrible. He's making cuts. There's a you, couple top 10 since the restart. He can't drive. Once he figures out how to, like, the irons aren't great, but they're a lot better than they were. We know that he can chip. We know that he can putt. Once he figures out his driver again, like, he'll be good again. Yeah. And Not, like, winning majors, like, every second major good, but... Even when he wasn't good, he was still in competition at majors. It's just everyone saw him have a bad Saturday. Like, give me a break. He had a good Sunday, so he's back. I, he's I a middling player who will spike at certain times. And has courses that he will, at, up including well. the Masters Colonial, that he will be a threat at till he's six, 50 years old. Yeah, if he can find someone to fix his swing so he can start hitting fair. Like, he doesn't need to drive the ball Bryson length. He just needs to hit fucking fairways. Mm. Stop being short and putting it into the rough. That's not good. My take on it is, it's simple. I I don't know why I bring it up, because to me there's absolutely nothing to talk about in the sense that his results and track record are identical to players who are ranked 50th, 60th in the world. That's what they do. There's inconsistencies. At times, they can pop. If he wins again, n certainly no one's surprised, even his detractors, as I've said many times, how many times in a season do we see players ranked 50 and above win golf tournaments? It's not uncommon. They're all world-class players who can get it going. Um, but his stats, his results, his finishes are reflective of exactly what he is. He's the world number 62 right now. That's it. Do you, would you? So like will, we, will he be at the next WGC? Yeah, he probably will be. That's why the next WGC is China. So oh, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah, a long time, but he'll have playoff events. Like he's not like not in the playoffs. He's got top 10 since the restart. Yeah. So actually he's 60th in the world. The player right above him is Joel Damon. who was never one on tour. That just is what it and, is. Like Hadwin's right behind him. Bubba's behind him. Corey Connors is behind him. Cameron Champ is behind him. Like these guys, like Champ is one. Connors is one. Post and it, we're talking about the Wyndham. He won the Wyndham last year. Like it, you're right. It just, it's just, it's, it's different for him because you see him go from the number one player in the world down to this. I'm just seeing more mainstream criticism than ever. Maybe that's just a major. Like a major brings out those conversations. It's the first major in 13 months. But he gets flack for being in, in, in like featured groups by a lot of us like really hardcore golf fans. But here's the thing. Ask casuals to name yeah, five ask, ask golf players. Jordan Spieth's one of them. Like 100%. Yeah, I, I would. Totally and it's agree. probably a three man list because Tiger and Phil will take one of those spots too. So he's one of three people who aren't Tiger and Phil that a casual golf fan would say, quickly, name me five golfers. Well, there, I think that there is merit to making every early feature group Phil, Speeth, and let's say Bubba, because you will see every inch of that course for the later on in the day. You'll see the left, you'll see the right, you'll see every like possible weird shot you can make. Like they're just everywhere. So Greller. And fun players to like. Phil, Spe like, Spieth has become a fun player to watch just because you just don't know what's going to happen shot to shot. Oh, they are everywhere. Greller, no one walks more. <laughs> the Fitbit on Greller tops everybody on tour. Last what he would like to put his feet in a fairway. Yeah, it'd be nice. Well, Spieth was doing it on Sunday, and he shot three under. He actually hit fairways on Sunday. I Comfortable playing with Palmer, his buddy. I don't know. How about Tiger? I was actually encouraged from what I saw from Tiger this week. I didn't think that he would really compete at this course just because the driving has been a bit lack, but the driving on Sunday looked really good. The irons were pretty good all week. Guy, his putting has really kind of gone away. I think that's due to the lack of play. Like that's yeah. something that you kind of need to find your flow. He'll find yeah. it, obviously. But he's going up against 23-year-olds who are playing nonstop competitive golf. And Bubba, who's playing nonstop. Yeah. There's just, it's a different world. He can't compete with his B game. No, like, he, to win. Yes. It just doesn't work like that anymore. Um, and the putted, there was just a lot of frustrating putting. Was it Saturday? I mean, just so many, like, six, eight footers, his sweet spot zone. And they weren't, like, missing, like, oh, it felt like he had it right and he just, oh, missed. There were just some insane, dare I say, amateur-looking, like, eight footers that aren't even sniffing a hole. 
And just, it's all relative to make that comment, but this is Tiger Woods. And he went to a different putter this week, right? I mean, there's a lot of talk from the equipment junkies earlier in the week. Uh, you know, the famous Newport wasn't in the bag. Should be smoking Newports. Calm him down on the course a little bit. The last thing I wanted to say, Rory came T33, Tiger was T37, Justin Thomas was T37. Rory gets heat for coming T33. Thomas gets no heat for coming T37. But if Rom had come T37, the only narrative would be, John Rom sucks. But Justin Thomas is immune to this. It's really bizarre. Uh, I guess he won the week before. Like I don't. If it romped one two weeks ago, and no, he but, sucks. But it's he weird. I, win. But I think like at St. <laughs> Jude, you they get very little wiggle room. But I think we all sort of accepted that Rom didn't have a good St. Jude first kind of event with the number one label free pass there. But if he struggles at the major after we've kind of tried to rise him up, then we're gonna then we're gonna bite him again. Uh, but you're absolutely. Right? I don't know. Justin Thomas. Thomas doesn't move the needle either way. It's really weird. Like, there's no, like, super highs for him because he never gets enough credit for being good when he is good, it feels. Because he doesn't, because people still want to talk about Brooks and Bryce. And it's like, yeah, Justin Thomas wins. He's fine. But he's great. But when he's bad, people aren't like, oh, no, he's no good. It's the indifference. He's not polarizing. the, The indifference towards Justin Thomas is really bizarre. And Rory has just settled in as this guy... Like, especially since the restart. Like, he played well this week. And just nothing again. It's again. Weird. Making it's, bogeys. Like, a lot of them. He's turned into, like, Ricky. Better Ricky. Although, I, how I, good was an Ander curse of Ricky double tapping a to miss the cut by one? That really hurt me. That was fun. I loved it. I mean, the week, everything's great. The weekend was gravy. The positions were fine Friday that it didn't trigger me off a cliff. Uh... I don't know what, what what's a well, what's a fair odd for a Ricky anytime FedEx Cup event win? Oh boy, even money now that he's not <laughs> now, that he, even, now that Tim has given up yeah. on him for life and that he'll never win okay. again. I want to make one more point. With he's the, playing Boston yeah. next week. He's yeah. already won there, <laughs> and and we shall move on. I sort of talked about on the show. This number that Morikawa hit at, that 35 to 1, it's really become a sweet spot for these guys. I want to say the Brooks first major was essentially that number. It the was Justin. For, it was 40 bet down to 33. The Justin 40 first bet down major. To 30. Like, that's the number. And Morikawa got bet down. It's I, such I had him a at big 35 ask. and yeah. 30. As we spoke about on the show, since I believe we've been doing a show, Dustin is the only guy to cash an under 20 to 1 first time major, unless Day might have too. First, I was thinking about first time major? First major win oh, under yeah. 20 to 1 since we've been doing the show. Day might have also. Yeah, because Day was fire going into that PGA championship. He just won the yeah. Canadian Open. So, you know, you understand what, like, that's a big ass, but we believe Bryson and Roms is imminent. Xander's number got insane guy couldn't hit an iron again this week yeah, by the way f- frustrating but i assume he'll be bet down uh, i guess he'll be starting low going to wingfoot because everyone is oh, still be, waiting he'll be for 16 the, to 1 yeah. going into wingfoot i wonder what he is right now because he's gonna have a great fedex cup i'm you know he's very consistent this is what six straight top 20s he's a great out play- of the he's break. A great player uh but yeah no the number just makes it the big ass so the first time major win for guys that become all world players and more is now in that, it, it, that's like that sweet spot range. You, you catch him. Shoffley and Bryson and JT and Rom were all 16 to one to win the U S open. Shoffley, Bryson, JT and Rom. Brooks and Rory and Dustin are the three favorites. I love Z- Xander. He does not belong with them. It was like when Cantlay he doesn't belong with two them. weeks ago it was like 16 to one for that some reason. Great like, player. Doesn't, what are you doing here? I, and people can debate it. I know Xander has a little hardcore niche, but in my opinion, he is not John Rom. He's not. I don't expect an extended career as volatile as number one in the world is. It's going to exchange a lot. I expect Rom will have an extended run as number one in the world. I don't see that for for Xander Shoffley. 
I see him being a in a very elite golfer. I can see him getting to number one, but yeah, I'm kind of with you. If someone's gonna like hold it for a year, I could see Rom holding it for a year. Yeah, I, I don't think he'll he's have in... like remember the day year when he was just unstoppable. Yeah. It feels like Rom has that year in him somewhere. And uh, and yeah, or even the Dustin year. Like maybe Rom will get one big event, but like there will be he'll stack them up. I just I love Xander. I don't think he deserves the same number as Rom and Bryson to be under in that class to win that first But he has to be that number because all people want, like if you post him at 20, everyone will bet him. So if you're just like, hey, let's post him at 16 because everyone will bet him Well, it's also part of the thing that as we've established many times, it's a fun place to start your betting card and we all decided he's the best player in the mid-20s and all of a sudden he got locked down to the high teens because we all loved him in the mid-20s. Okay, that was, what, an hour? Yeah, I mean, we're... Let's talk about the Wyndham Championship, because this is not a super fun one. 156 players in the field, already a slew of withdrawals. So even by the time that you listen or watch this show, there could be more people out of the field. I can't, like, Brooks is currently in the field. I just, I can't believe he's going to show up and play this tournament. He better withdraw. This is the final event before the FedEx Cup playoff. So there's a lot of jockeying for position going on right now because uh, it'll be the top 200, the top 125 players. Like, Sergio's on the outs. That's why he's playing this week he's another guy who kills TPC Boston where the Northern Trust is. So get in, maybe make a move. $15 million is a lot to entice people to go play, to get into the FedEx Cup playoffs. I mean, Morikawa wins $1.9 million for winning the PGA Championship. Yeah. You put together three hot weeks and win at Eastlake, all of a sudden you're $15 million richer. That's Even for rich guys, that's a lot of money. And those are just bonus payments. When yeah. you do well in the events to get there, you still get that money too, boys. So Sedgefield CC... Side of the Wyndham Championship, Greensboro, North Carolina, par 70, 70, 127 yards, Bermuda grass greens. This is irons and putting. This is no different than Heritage. This is really no different than the John Deere Classic. Uh, what else do we got? RSM. Just the Colonial. Ones where driving doesn't really come into play. Like you can gain a lot of strokes off the tee and help yourself out that way, but it's going to be like 125 to 175, wedge fest. Whoever makes the most putts is going to win. It's going to be like minus 20 or better. Uh, so you got to be making your putts this week. But anyone can, any kind of skill set can win this week. It's not like, oh, bombers only. No, like CT Pan can win. Brooks, <laughs> Brooks needs to withdraw. So, or he, go win. So, no, he needs to withdraw. So he, he could just say, I was hurt on the weekend. Make him feel better about his Sunday. Well, he's not going to win because Tim is using Brooks in the one and done. <laughs> What a weird time to use Brooks. <laughs> Maybe he'll win now. Tim is using him. Can, so just help me out. So we have this and then how many FedEx Cup Three. events? And then what? The U.S. Open. Then there's a week off, then the U.S. Open, and then it's Greenbrier or Houston? Greenbrier. Like the swing season starts. But people will play because the Masters is coming. Yeah. And there's no Asian swing this year. So they're going to add yeah. things to California, I think. And uh, one more thing. Props to part-time golfer Adam Scott. Yeah, nice week. What a guy. What a legend. What a legend. So the odds, the faves in the field this week, Brooks and Webb Simpson are co-favorites at 10 to 1. Reed is 14. Fleetwood is 18. Casey is 20. Rose is 25. Abraham Answer has already withdrawn as we're recording this. He was 25 to 1. So that's going to affect odds going down the board. Uh, Harris English is 30 to 1. Those are your faves in this field. Do you have... Anyone you would think about betting from there? Not really. Kind of so, like Rose. Uh, Rose. That actually makes the most... Irons and putting. Like, this is a, a track for him. Yeah. No, I, and that seems like a fair number for Rose. Yeah, he gets it going. to 1? Yeah, in this field, that yeah. seems good. Because, like, Harris English is 30 to 1, but without answer, he's going to drop to 25 to 1. So then you have a choice. Yeah. You can bet Justin Rose at 22 or Harris English yeah. at 25. And I like Harris English. Like, he's really good for this course, but, like, it seems yeah. strange. And I was incredibly complimentary of Rose in all my content last week because of the number. Didn't bet him anywhere, so really wanted him to go away. But again, I, I think him skipping the, the WGC no-cut payday in Memphis to sort of work on himself and his game just shows how committed and dedicated he was, and he had a great little week. So I, I don't mind that at all. That's a, good, that's a good call. And the funny thing is, if Brooks withdraws, everybody loses points. No, these, all these guys lose points. 
Well, yes, absolutely. And like Webb in some places is 11 to 1. Some places he's like 9 to 1. 10 to 1 is just what we're Webb. using to keep it simple. Like if you just wanted to bet Webb and Rose this week, that could be the move. I mean, this course is everything that Webb is. Webb has won here before. He his, lives on the course. <laughs> his daughter's name is Wyndham, his first child. I think it was his first win. In fairness, that's not helping Wyndham Clark that much this week. Fair, <laughs> but I'm saying there's just a the thing there. This is where he pulled his back in the pool? No, that was at Greenbrier. Oh, that's another. Oh, okay. Because, yeah, he's got a house there. I, that one felt local for Webb also. Well, they all have, like, I think they all rent, like, Lodging they all, like, there, own yeah. property because there's a big like Greenbrier. Apparently, it's I, a beautiful. I, I, I talked to David Jane about this because he used to go to Greenbrier yeah. every year to go check it out. Apparently, like it's a fucking lot of fun. No, it's, it's a, a casino, literally resort town. There's like the falconry mountains. and go karting and anything you can think of is is there. I've actually suggested to like my brother in law who drives to Florida because they're like afraid to fly his own thing. My dad is afraid to fly as well. Um, nah, that's his excuse they love for, doing that's his excuse yeah. for not coming up to see his grandkids. They love doing activities. Like, they do all sorts of activities. I, like, told him, check out, as you're driving through, you got to just check this place out. Because he loves all that sort of, well, it, that those random activities. Well, it does seem, like, that would be a fun one to go to. Like, it now falls during football season, which is kind of off the table for me. But if we were, like, to go to a tournament and, like, bring our family or Old do White. Some, yeah, the, the old white TVC. <laughs> <laughs> um that it it seems like a place where you can bring your family but also have like adult stuff to do at night like yeah. there's the casino there's music venues there's restaurants there's like i don't want to say clubs because i don't think there's clubs but like places where you can go out and drink but it does seem like there's all the kids stuff yeah. there and there's golf like it seems great and <laughs> yes to your point it does seem like i know phil's got a property there i want to say faldo built a huge mansion yeah, faldo even down plays on the, the property he still plays in the Greenbrier every year yeah, uh, they all... Yeah. What about Moss 7 Mages, Phil? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you talk to me when you win seven? <laughs> Sir Nick, angry. Uh, but I think that you have two ways to play this board. You bet like two of these guys from the top or just kind of throw darts. This is a throw dart week for me. Like I've done the research and nothing really stands out to me to tell you the truth. Like I'm looking at my fantasy national uh, custom modeling right now. Uh, you can go check out the first look show where I really go through this in depth, but fantasynational.com slash Mayo, go build your own if you want to. Like my rankings are Casey, Webb, Henley, Hadley, Werner. That's not <laughs> inspiring a ton of confidence. Like, pay, like, you have to make putts at this course in order to win, just because the score is going to be so low. Can Casey make enough putts to win? I don't think he can. Like, to get to minus 20-something? Like, Rose can. Fleetwood can. Webb can. Reed can. Brooks can. Brendan Todd can. Brendan Todd can. That is true. And this Kevin is Kisner can, I hope. We're not in that range I'm yet. sorry. I'm talking about the guys at the top. Yeah. Uh, uh, sure. I don't know. Reed do anything for you? Reed's won here before. Like, yeah, of course he does. But I. You bet the Reed, the big events, the big numbers. No, no, not even that. I'm like, I'm saying it depends on how you want to bet this card. Like, I, I have no problem taking two guys from 20 to one and below. You want to go Reed, Rose, Webb, Reed, Reed, Webb, whatever it might be, whatever combination of those two guys that you want. And those are your two bets for the week. I, I think that might actually be the sensible strategy. That is not the strategy I'm going to take because I just won a bunch of money. So I want to bet a bunch of randos at like 200 to one to see if they can win. Because this is also a tournament where that can happen. Yeah. And we I'm... just saw this. We saw this tournament play itself out twice so far since the restart. One was in Detroit where Bryson at six to one won. Or you get the 3M where Michael Thompson at 100 to one wins. And there's just a bunch of losers at the top of the leaderboard. Like... In these sorts of field, 156 players coming off a major where the top guys are all kind of spent, like it can really vacillate between it. I'd rather take the shot on the long shots, keep my like, my card will seem like it's has so many guys on it, but the actual like money amount Equi will yeah. be way yeah. lower. Than oh, it, 100%. You know what I mean? Like, because people misjudge that in their mind. Like if I have seven guys from above 100 to one, like that's that, like one bet. That, that's bet less. Of, that's yeah. less than one yeah. bet on Webb Simpson. <laughs> I know what you mean. But I'm trying to explain that to people who don't <laughs> understand. Yeah, that. no. I, one that makes total sense. Also, you know, some events you have a little more exposure to to than others. I will find myself probably like normal. Put it this way: we have been in a run here. Um, feels heavy outside of 
Minnesota, like Memorial, WGC, Major, and those betting cards, like they're not going above 50 to 1. Like where my money is. No, I, and, and that's actually they just they're not. That's but a really, here, but that's a really good point because we keep saying like this twenty to forty range has just been hitting, but the twenty to forty range isn't the twenty to forty range yeah, this week. Here, that's what I mean. So when I do that, I'm more in like that forty to eighty range. I think is where I am going to be making my card bill. There's a lot of guys flirting in that fifty to one range that I feel like I'm going to stack up players that I trust. Sixty to thirty range. So let's talk about these guys. We got Horschel. English, Spieth, M, Kisner, C, woo, former winner at this event, 40 to 1. 40 Todd, to 40, 40 to 1. Sergio, 40 to 1. Lowry, 45. <laughs> Moore, Snedeker, former winner. Shez Reedy, Russell Henley, Corey Connors, Neiman, Tom Lewis, JT Poston, last year's winner at 60 to 1. I bet Ryan Moore at 50 this morning. I bet Kevin Kisner at 50 this morning. I can get behind Kisner, too. Looks as Pete got Pete Dye. This isn't a, this is a Donald, Donald Ross. This is a Donald Ross course, but like, I might just say because I've I've been on a nice run, I might just say fucking bet Siwoo at forty. I I really like Siwoo this week. Can't put a price on peace of mind. Like, what would be the number? 50? 66? I'm asking. I don't know. I, what I, would be the what would be a good? I think forty's fair for him at this course. Is the with weird four, thing with four? But here's the problem that I have with Siwoo at forty. Sergio's also forty. Todd. I was going to say Lowry is also 45. I mean, Shez Reevy was the darling of the tour, and it's not like he missed the cut. He has played poorly on the weekend of the PGA, but this is a perfect course for him. He's 55. Like, there are just better numbers than Siwoo's 40. How bad was Neiman last week? Because him at 55 seems something I could easily want to fire on, and there's a Corey Connors money pit that could be calling me this week oh, also. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Big time, Pat. Uh, unsurprisingly, Joaquin Neiman in his two rounds at the PGA Championship gained off the tee, gained through approach, lost around the greens, lost on the greens. This could be <laughs> classic Neiman. In so he's done that in every start he's made yeah. since the restart. He's gained off the tee and through approach. Uh, at Heritage, he was fifth, which I said was the biggest comp course. Uh, two point seven off the tee, seven point four on approach. That has been his best tournament since the restart, and put it around field average. You're going to need to gain this week on the greens. Anyone? Well, it's a problem with the next guy I want to talk about because anybody who watched, you know, the season preview, I committed myself to losing a lot of money on Corey Connors this year. I've come come off that quite a bit because there've just been lots of cards where I just haven't bet him. But I think I'm going to lose money on Corey Connors this week. Uh, he doesn't make a lot of putts, though, so stick it to three foot, pal. Yeah, this is a tournament where he can kind of do that. I just have a hard time betting Connors at 55. I know, like, Snedeker's in bad form. I mean, Snedeker shot 59 at this course two years ago. Uh, Henley is someone who has not putted well, but still putts really well on Bermuda greens, and he just rates out better right now. than like, In that model, and Connors is sixth. Like, he's basically tied with Chez Reevy when it comes down to it. But I think I want to look down a little bit further. Well, there's a couple names because even uh, Doc Redman is sitting at an 80. So when I said 30 to 60, oh. and those are the guys that we're talking about, you want to talk about the 80s? Do you also want to nope. bring up uh, 400 Sorry. to ones? 60, then I'm going to say your Chez call makes a lot of sense. He was a guy that a lot of people were hoping if it was going to play last week to the other profile, which I guess Morikawa winning, but you're just not as good at with your long irons. Yeah. You don't hit it as long. So Morikawa is the best possible version of that player. That's why I said he's sort of like advanced Stenson. Because Stenson was the best possible version of that player. Now it's Morikawa. I, I could see Chez at 55 being someone I bet. I don't... Yeah, Lowry? Like, why not Lowry? Lowry is someone who plays well at Heritage. He's been gaining off the tee. We know he can get the hot putter going at any time. It seems like he only wins big events, though. He's sort of like Mini Brooks. He's won a WGC. He's won a major. He won, like, the race to yeah. Dubai. <laughs> like, uh, well, uh, one of those, one of those premier, like, yeah, yeah, fancy ones. You know, he, he's really scumming it at the Wyndham Championship. So it's just kind of intriguing of where you want to allocate your money. Like I said, the only bet that I've actually made was Ryan Moore, 50 to 1. Didn't even play the each way on it. Just let's go Ryan Moore. Uh, the irons and the driving have been a lot better recently. So if we go 60 to 100, this range has just guys in it that I can see myself betting. You mentioned Redmond. I could do that. Sebez, this is a 
perfect course for Bezudenhut. Bezudenhut. Yeah, just to go nine under. Driving doesn't really matter. Irons and putting. The two things he does well. He's 66 to one. So where's Burns at? Uh, Burns not playing. Uh, Bedusenho, uh, Matthias Schaub, Doc Redman. Those would be the names here that kind of attract me. I don't know if uh, I, I would say Bezinut, Fratelli, Norlander. Who would yeah. remember, remember Norlander yeah. been playing really well? Really well. This is actually Redman. This could be a real sneaky spot for Norlander because he was getting some steam, and then we played some hyper. Events like a WGC, like a major, forgot easy about him. to, yeah, forget about him. But this could be a strong number if he is playing. And I know he did not play in the PGA Championship last week because of an injury, but it appears like he's playing right now. He is not withdrawn as the time that we're recording <clears> this. <throat> CH three. This is such a yeah. CH three course. Where did what did he win? RSM. RSM. <laughs> I. It's a big number. Yeah, eighty to one. That's what I'm saying. Like, I might just gamble on these 80 and 90 to 1 guys. Well, you've just... already mentioned HV3. Yeah, HV3 is 90 to 1. You know, that's pretty good because I got suckered into betting him in a couple places out of the restart at numbers that he probably shouldn't have been at in stronger fields. This one actually might make a lot more sense than some earlier HV3 bets I was making. And how has he been recently? I mean, he made he had the a nice day with Reed. Was it Saturday? Yeah. Well, he was top 30 at the last week and he, you know, hit his approaches really well. He like, if you go look at his numbers since the restart, he played really badly at Muirfield village, both events. And that's it. Whatever. He missed the cut at heritage, but couldn't putt. The guy hasn't gained strokes putting yet since the restart. That would be the one big drawback to him. And he's a worse putter on Bermuda than anything else. But you know, when you're dealing with guys at 90 to one, they're going to be bad at things. But remember, like, everyone was all over Glover's nuts for a while, and now everyone's off Glover. Now he's back to 80 to 1. This is a field he can win. <laughs> okay. Can he win? No, probably not. But, you know, Burns, everyone was kind of all over. But I, there's not a huge discrepancy between some of these guys and the 100-plus guys is the problem. So Where I did, Mc, did McNeely pop somewhere recently? Yeah, he competed at Barracuda. Oh, yeah. So 100 plus to one. I got two in so far from this range, and I'll probably just, you know, take a crack at a few more. Brennan Grace, back from COVID, 110 to one, was playing awesome before he got COVID. He's back, so I assume he's okay. And now he's on a short par 70, which is his jam. Yes. And he's striking his irons well, and we know he puts better on Bermuda. Like, the, give, give me. He's the same odds as Christoph Ventura. I'll take Brennan Grace 110 to 1 with the each way. I'm in on that already. Yep. The other, I, you sold. Sold. Great, great call. The other one who can win a birdie fest because his putter can go scorching hot. His putter has been absolute garbage since the restart, but we've only played one course on Bermuda, and he actually gained strokes putting on the one course at Bermuda, lost everywhere else. Munoz is back down to 200 to 1. Like he's now like a legitimate long shot flyer again. He's someone whose putter can go scorching at a moment's notice. So I'll take him at 200 to one. Those are two bets I've already made. I guess driving distance means nothing. Means nothing. Keith Mitchell, anything? You can bet Keith Mitchell. 160. Oh, Rafa's just in a world of hurt, eh? Yeah, where is Rafa? 125 to one. He's the same, same odds as like world. Will Gordon. He's in a world of hurt right now. Uh, other guys to look for that I'll probably end up being on is just like just by taking long shot cracks. Dan I, Lee. I was going to say uh, Tyler Duncan at 225. He also won RSM this year. He competed at Heritage. Like, again, I think if you're going to take long shots, just look at the guys who played well at these short par 70 courses. And he's one of them. And his strokes gain numbers don't look great, but he's also been competing in good fields. Like, he was at the WGC. Yeah, he's not as good as John Rahm. Shocker. <laughs> Cam Davis, Carlos Ortiz, your boy Zhang Gang. Tell me about them. Uh, listen, where was it that Cameron Davis was get? Was it just the Barracuda? Was I just like watching late night Barracuda now? Like this horde of like fourth rate guys are in my brain. Yeah, who make up this whole backboard? I mean, this is basically the same field as the Barracuda, <laughs> except for six names at the top. Yeah, I like the I like the Grace call. What about Pat Perez? 
I don't know Sneaky. Where... He didn't get in. He was the first alternate. How is he just not? Missed. How is he not in tournaments okay. last week? Love kind of felt bad for him. Love Sigs. Where is Pat Perez? One twenty-five. I feel like at a birdie fest. Why not? He played well. He even yeah. stormed the leaderboard at Barracuda as well. He was twenty-third at three M. He's made three cuts in a row. The driving's kind of back. The approach is back. He gets the hot putting week. I don't see a reason why he can't contend. Okay, one more. Where, how, how, what, what odds were Pat Perez? One twenty-five. This feels like a feels like a course where Pat Perez would play well. Uh, okay, two more because one's just an obvious put out there. This field do anything for Luke List for you at a hundred? Yeah, another guy yeah. who plays well at Heritage. I mean, I'm I'm not going to not be on Luke yeah, List at hundred to one. And you see, who's forty? Your other guy's a hundred. Like Wes Bryan, one hundred and seventy-five to one. If it's irons and putting, yeah, that's driving, what he yeah. does. Uh, Charlie Hoffman's had a bit of life lately. Are you sure about that? How positive are you that he has had life lately? Uh, the work day was good. And then he had a couple of nice rounds at the Barracuda. He played the Barracuda? Yeah, he did. He did have a nice work day. Bad at the 3M, like really bad. Bad, yeah, because I think I bet him at the 3 A 3M, of all the cards out of the break, that was a disaster, but whatever happens. Stupid muck muck event. Who else played well? I guess Warinsky. Warinsky's too good for this tournament now. Well, he can make his own schedule. Why would he play here? He's got to get ready for the FedEx Cup. Can he make his own schedule by winning the Barracuda? Does that give you like all the exemptions? Get you into the players and the TOC. It might give you your card. That's H Hoffman was T25 at the Barracuda. Mm. Type of Fabian Gomez was third, so I don't know what to tell you. I, yeah, I'm is, just, is, Go is Gomez listen, in this? What is Gomez? You asked me. Gomez could win this. He's 200 to one. He's playing well. All He's I, playing better than Hoffman. All I said was he was fine at Barracuda and he showed he was pretty good at workday, and you confirm that. Did I gloss over Kyle Stanley? Is he playing? <laughs> yeah, he is 100 to 1. Like, what about Chuck Schwartzel? <laughs> he got... Like, he, all these he, guys are the same. I don't know how to differentiate between these guys. <laughs> his putt. Do you know how big... We watched the putt that he made to make the cut. Do you know he needed, like... He had two starts left and needed, like... He got his exemption. $3,000. And he got it. Well, just by making the cut. So he would have just needed a cut last week or this week to get it. That's... I mean, that was big. So he'll be playing. He'll be playing with a vibe. Yeah. Like off he's got. Shoulders. Yeah. That weight is gone. That could be fine. I don't know what the numbers say. I know we had fun with Minnesota. Was it a live bet? I had Schwartzel at some crazy number and he actually hung around for. Yeah, he was there like on three Sunday. days. Could do that. I like. I, honestly, I like with how decent he's been playing, literally getting a free roll. Like this is a free roll for Charles. Now. Yeah. Major champion, Charles. Maybe we make the all South African card. We go Sebez, Sab Charles. Does Sabs get a count on that? Do you want to bet? I know he's a Donald <laughs> Ross specialist, but he's more of a... I don't even know. When was the last time Sabatini won? He's, he's, he's no a longer, draft kings He's king. also no longer South African, so... <laughs> he's Slovakian. But we could go Sebez, Charles, and Grace. Grace, Sebez, Charles, and Grace. And I might bet... Yeah. Anyone else? I want to take someone from the high end. Like, we just completely glossed over, like, Spieth and Im. Im played better than you'd think last week. Then that might be enough for me. Like, he missed the cut. Like, he didn't play well. But, but, his, this, but his driving and his irons weren't bad last week. His putting I, and chipping was bad. I is, saw some real big numbers out of the gate on sites that I didn't have access to. That I would have auto bet. Like, wh what do you think is a preferable route here? Just kind of taking like eight guys from this like 90 and up range. Like start with like you like Redman. Like take like Redman, Glover, Hal, Varner, Charl, List. Grace. Grace, Perez, Duncan, Munoz, and Wes Bryan. Or do you say, screw it. M, Kisner, Lowry, Sergio, that kind of thing. Kisner. I would probably go my normal route of a card in that like 40 to 80 range and throw in a couple bombs. I don't have as much interest in the West. Bro like there's a couple guys, the, gr the grace you absolutely sold me on. Um, Perez, I could be in for, but other than that, I could see it more of a M Connors, Kisner, Bidusen, hope for Telly Redman. Like, just, wow, what a motley crew of guys asking to win. 
Or do you do yourself the favor and just be like, web, rose, done. I think Rose is enticing. I could. I, I think I might. I think I've talked Rose. myself into Rose. Rose at twenty two. You see life. Like I, again, I don't want to go back to it. Like he worked on it. We saw improvements last week. I have little doubt that there'll be a carryover into his strong play. I could do that. I just feel like he makes enough putts that he can compete with. Like if this goes to minus twenty three, he can get there. All That's the- my only problem with Casey. But this is historically, like, when you go back and look at the past winners, like, Poston won last year. This is also a decent course to save some bullets, because I think it was Eric Patterson last year. I think it was him. Put us on to Poston. Like, Poston was the ultimate fantasy national go look at the live leaderboard. Like, oh, this guy's leading the field tee to green and couldn't make a putt on Thursday. So it's like Wolf. Like, a lot like Wolf, but then he was like... They dropped him at like 125 to one. It's like, oh, go bet Poston. Except Perfect. Wolf didn't need to beat the 20 the best players, players on yeah. the planet. He had to go beat Brant Snedeker, yeah. basically, or Webb, or whoever it was. Uh, and he did. And the numbers just pointed to him playing really <coughs> well at something like that. How did he play at Heritage? Yeah, Rose was Rose couldn't putt at Heritage, but he was 14th. Like, if you go look at the courses where Rose has played well, they've all been par 70 since the restart. Third at Charles Schwab, 14th at Heritage, 9th at the PGA Championship. Even the other, w- the other ones are longer par 71s. I guess Travelers was a par 70. Did not play well. I mean, there. for all the, the things I said about him luck sacking, I, I give full credit to his ability to score when it felt like he was out of position a ton at an incredibly difficult golf course. Uh, oh, that's someone's odds I wanted to look at. C.T. Pan. Likes to score? He has lost strokes putting, I believe, in 13 consecutive events, so that's not great. But remember, he was going to win this tournament. He's 250 to one at one place. He's 250 to one another Jeff place? Jeff knows the place. So I'll take, I'll take a gander Wait, at him. Are and... they up yet? Yeah, right. Just, right. Just now. Anyway. I need to pull my car over. CT Pan. Don't, don't mention the odds from I'm there because that not. will just confuse people. I'm not mentioning the, the odds. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Sight shop. How about that? Yeah, you just always got a sight shop. Uh, but Pan has been hitting his irons really well. He's won Heritage. He was an OB on the 72nd hole away from winning this tournament against Brant Snedeker two years ago. I would take him at like a long shot flyer. Like, well, I don't know if 175 does it for me. I bet you if you go look there, like Wes Bryan's probably like 300 to one too. Those are far more enticing numbers than I'm seeing here. Even someone like Duffner can play really well. He's 200 to one. So it's an interesting week to figure out. I get annoyed. Quick picks for the Wyndham Championship. I have already bet Ryan Moore at 50 to 1, Brennan Grace 110 to 1 with the top five each way, and Sebastian Munoz at 200 to 1 with the top five each way. Other than that, I'm really looking at the top of this board to figure out if I want to take a shot. I feel like Rose is going to be the guy at 22 to 1. For me, I might go to M at 35. Roll it that way and skip this mid-range. If not, I like your Kisner call. I think he's all right. And then maybe just a bunch of these long shots like Charl and Howell and, you know, you said Pat Perez. And, you know, tune back in Wednesday to see where I end up falling on the sword uh, with with some of these guys. Who are you going with? Yeah, the bet that I've made is, is Kevin Kisner, and the bet I promised to make is Brendan Grace. And you could say this Doc Redman 80 I like also. I, I'm very confident that you could bet that and you'll see that on my card. Uh, other than that, I think I've given the names and I totally agree with you. If I am playing the, that short end, I think Rose makes perfect sense. You're just taking that elite status player at a really strong number against the field. And if a couple of these guys at the top either A, withdraw or aren't involved in the weekend, he's suddenly the biggest name going. Yeah. And you'll feel really made, good about his ability to close off Brian Harmon. Just randomly looking at a name. That this, being said, I'm tempted. Like I said, that's sir. You could, like I said, you could definitely build a card of M Kisner, M Kisner, Sergio Moore, Lowry, if you wanted to. Revi. Yeah. Yeah. You could bet those six guys, and they're all above forty to one. Part of me also wants to think Tommy Fleetwood's going to shoot twenty three under this week. Well, there is. That part of it too. So winners at this course in the past: Stenson, Sergio, Siwoo Kim. International? What are we? What yeah, are we like, for? The, like good international players just kind of show up here and win sometimes. 
KJ Joy. <clears throat> Camillo Vajegas. So it's all on the table. One and done for the week. Who are you using? Tim is using Brooks. <clears throat> I guess if Brooks withdraws, we'll have to get another one from Tim. Oh, I've used... I need to give myself credit. Okay. Not only did I pick Morikawa to win a major, I picked him in the one and done the week he missed the cut. That is... That takes something. That takes a skill. My turn to pick. Your turn to pick. You had Dustin Johnson last week. He came second. You moved way up in the standings. You're still in third, but not by much now. It's a... Very random Kevin Kisner. Kisner? Yeah. Uh, I'll use Justin Rose. I haven't used him yet. I was going to use I think Rose, I'm, I, I, I really him. think I'm going to end up betting Justin Rose. I got to look more into it. It's funny. Like, I've had such good feels for tournaments. I mean, last week, I was kind of all over the map. But at the same time, like, I locked in the research. Like, okay, these guys are should play well. Throw out these guys. This week, like, I don't have a fucking clue. It could be anyone. It feels like one of those weeks. That's why I say maybe save a live bullet or two for after round one or round two. Okay, well, that's the other part. I've noticed we all make these sites. They are so hyper. It's it's almost like you send someone's working because if, if Brooks makes a birdie, like they're there, they're reacting. They're reacting to like the very top names. But there's so many names, they don't have a clue who they are. They're not paying attention to that you do catch them napping. Um, and as I almost made the joke in Minnesota, even though it was like Charo had an insane number who is a major champion, uh, in these fields with so many like lesser runs, they're bound to make those mistakes. They're bound to make those mistakes. And I'll also say the Saturday afternoon live line on Brooks Kepka when there was literally like 20 guys within a stroke of it, it was like three to one and it was the most embarrassing thing I ever saw. And if you lost your, if you bet that I'll laugh at you. It was I, a horrible line at a horrible spot and people must have still been betting it. Cause he can't lose. No, like it's a popular bet to make. Like here's a perfect example. I got a message from one of my friends who texted me or he sent like a messenger to our Facebook messenger chat at like 4 PM yesterday. Pat, who were the golf plays today? <laughs> yeah. like, you, you've at, you've, Waited for eight hours okay. into the final round to ask me. He's like, oh, don't worry. I just bet Dustin Johnson at two to one. Sure, but like, what are you doing? Okay, <laughs> that's crazy. But if you're just a guy that like bets, you're not watching Thursday, Friday. You're going to watch Sunday. You're betting these other sports. Well, why don't you ask me b well before the round starts at least? I understand that part of it. My point being is if you're a guy that like bets the NBA, oh, it's three hours, two and a half to one. That's a good payout. Like, I don't mind. I'm going to watch this. That seems that's not how you bet on golf. A hundred percent not. But I'm saying that was always like uh yeah, like Morenzi would always be like, oh, you guys like laugh at eight to one, but you don't know how good eight to one is. Yeah, I'm also not betting a football game where one team wins yeah, or another team that's wins. The, uh, thank <laughs> I'm you. I'm betting too. a golfer against literally there were seven guys tied for the lead on the back nine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which like knocks him each ways. I, you just felt like either were part of it or you weren't. Yeah. Even the extended each ways, it was almost like you had to be T1. Well, at one point. Yeah, Casey paid big for Paul. Good. Paul grabbed Casey 150 on Thursday with the each way. Fantastic. So what, what would that, was it the one fourth or the one fifth, Paul? Do you remember? I don't, yeah, I don't remember. Because he got second with Dustin, so he got his full each way. Yeah, I think it was the... 35 to one? 30 to one? Yeah, top five quarter... One one quarter. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it works. Nice payout. Better than the same payout Plus as Kisner. Morikawa. I mean, I was a donkey for not following both of you guys on Morikawa. I was like, oh, I think Victor at 55 is better value. I'm an idiot. I'm not a golf expert. I should listen to the experts. Uh, it's a, I, I listen to you for the MMA. I know. I'm, I'm dumb. But uh, thank you for the Kisner top 20 and, and, and Casey and all that stuff. Yeah, Ul Ulrich was the first one out there. You got me on Casey because you caught one of the sites napping. Yeah. Uh, Ulrich had caught one of the other sites napping earlier for even bigger odds yeah. on Casey. He was three under at 125 to one. Other place had him at 33. is worth a shot. He's a guy we like. He's a guy we've been betting recently. And listen, so 100, 125 is a... F and that was the whole thing. Like I added Damon on... Sunday morning because he was 150. I had Si Wu at 250. I had Wolf at 100, and I had Casey at 125. Like I was just trying to pile up like triple digit equity in case 
Dustin fell or Morikawa fell, and then like it got one on one, it still would have given me profit if like Bryson had made the run or Brooks made the run. If, I could just hedge off of those guys. Let me ask you this question: If Fleetwood and Rose were an identical number this week, Rose. That's the question. Now, I don't dislike Tommy, but this seems like a course where Tommy could win. It just seems like Rose is playing well. Like Fleetwood's not hitting his irons at all. No. And Rose is. Rose he, is doing yeah, the opposite. Yeah, because when Fleetwood was scoring, it was like, oh, 30 footer, 30 footer. Holy shit, 30 footer. I think I'm going to bet Kyle Stanley. It feels like a Kyle Stanley course to me. And he played really well at Barracuda, too. Played, you know, he was the first round, or he was almost the first round leader in Minnesota. He's almost like a good Charlie Hoffman. And there's no way Willett can make enough birdies. Hey, he just did in Detroit at a Donald Ross course. So not inconceivable, really. He played really well at Rocket Mortgage. That's a Donald Ross course. He was, what, like third? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. That'll do it. Pat Mayo Experience. Jeff Feinberg. Follow him on Twitter. At GFeinberg17. You can follow me at the PME. Twitter. Facebook, Instagram. Congratulations to all the winners out there. Hopefully we have another good week and uh, I will finalize my card for Wednesday. You can check that out on my Twitter page or my Facebook page. I don't know if I'm going to do the chat this week or not, but I'll probably just do a short show. Uh, probably like 15 minutes to get everyone up to speed of where I'm going to finalize everything at DraftKings show. Comes out on Tuesday. Fantasy football stuff going on all week as well. We're actually getting close to football season, whether it seems that way or not. What they're saying is they're going to play, so we got to start doing some more football content, just the way that it works. Keeps the lights on around here, although golf, pretty <laughs> fruitful lately too. Anyway, rate and review the Pat Mayo Experience podcast. Smash the like for the video and become a member at fantasynational.com today. Fantasynational.com slash Mayo for 20% off. Listener's League link in the description of the video and podcast, where it always is, in case you say, I listen to the show. Now you actually know where it is when I know that you're lying. Anyway, I'm Pat Mayo. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Experience! Experience!